So it should be easy to share from. All right. We're live. Are we? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sweating to death here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Hold on a second, buddy. You said it's on the Word Peddler Society page? Yep. You see it? Nope. Facebook.com, The Word Peddler. Oh, it's the page, not the group. Oh, it's the page, not the group. Yep. Yes, this looks fine. Oh. That is in the house. Can, yep, I Angel, see it can you see us? Yes. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see us there. Why do I stink at this or what? Holy <laughs> smokes. Yeah, let, let me show um, it to the group. Let me show yep, it to the I can group. see it. And uh I have to mute this real quick. Um I can see us. So we're yep. live. You think you're so goddamn here, here, hello. <laughs> and uh no you are yeah, we're live. you think it too we're live yay yeah a little bit of technical awesome. difficulty we we actually made it through d's lack of whatever it was that it took to get this set up um unfortunately jack was in an accident this past week and he will not be able to join us um many of you know he is okay if not just a little bit beat up the poor guy's a little black and blue and got some swelling and bangs and bruises. And, um, you know, we're having an awful lot of fun with that, but I'm not sure he's having as much fun as we are. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, um, welcome to the Book Asylum podcast. Today we have uh, Joshua and Heather Doherty, correct? Good. Yay, I didn't butcher it. Welcome to <laughs> the show. Um, I don't have a clue as to what I'm doing, and hopefully some more people will join in and we'll like get a little mayhem going on. But for now, yep. how about you just tell us a little bit about who you are and why we want to know you? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Joshua Doherty. I ride under a pen name Joshua Lloyd Fox. It's uh, pretty much how everybody knows me. Um, I'm the owner and publisher of Water Tower Hill Publishing. Uh, I write a dark urban fantasy series called The Archangel Missions. And I kind of got on the scene with my first book called I Won't Be Shaken. Um, sitting to my side is my beautiful wife, Heather, and I'll let her introduce herself. Oh, just me, Heather Doherty, um, writer, editor, help him publish, help him publish, um, <laughs> horror person. What else? That's it. Just a book person. That's just me. Well, Heather, cool. you um so you have cool. books I don't like um, under about. your maiden name, was it? I did have well, it was not my maiden name. It was my previously married name. Um my books came out under that name first, but they have now been re-released under the right name. So um oh, very they are nice. now under Heather Doherty, yes. Yeah, when so, you when you marry a publisher, you get all your books redone. Yeah, sounds like a that. plan. Mm -hmm. So, but so anyway, Joshua, man, uh, tell me more about the about your series, uh, the series that the, the massive series you're working on. Let's give people the details of what that. Yeah. Uh, so the Archangel Missions, it's a, it's over, I don't know, five hundred thousand words, book, uh, five books so far. I got three more to go. Um, like I said, it's dark urban fantasy. We talked about it, you know, eighteen months ago when I only had two or three books, but um. It is. Uh, it encompasses kind of my idea of how creation is made uh, on like eight different worlds. And like in the Bible, they uh, the archangels did missions where they came down, you know, wrestled with folks or told people mm -hmm. people were coming and stuff. So I, I kind of took a play on that where they come down and like in angels and demons or good omens, they they play with people's <laughs> lives to enact some kind of uh, change. But in this regard, they need humans help to win a war that's going on um some other kind of creation is crashing into ours and these really dark nasty things are coming through and it's as always usually the the heavenly host can't can't do anything on their own without the human's help and so that's every book is a is a different story a different genre a different world in a different time frame where they're coming in 
and uh, I'm messing with folks and whether the folks like it or not. And then, you know, it's all it's all gearing up to a big thing at the end. So sweet, sweet. Uh, so anyway, Joshua, uh, where, where did the main water tower, water tower publishing come from? But was it a specific reason uh, you made that? Yeah, so uh, I grew up at a place called Cal Farley's Boys Ranch in Amaro, near Amarillo, Texas. And right okay. behind my home, so it's an orphanage. Well, I was an orphan. Other kids were there for different reasons. But um, for me, it was an orphanage. Um, but right behind my home was a big, huge hill, and on top was a huge water tower. It's the same water tower that's in my logo. Um, but I write in my very first book how I would sit on top from the ages of like, 12 to 18 uh, sitting up there just trying to figure out myself thinking up stories thinking what i wanted to do so i always tell people i like i became a man up on top of that hill so it just really made sense when i started my own company to name it after a place that's it, it's intrinsically more important to me than even like my parents and where i was born and stuff like that i i spent more cool. time there figuring myself out than anywhere else in my early life so yeah it just it was just it was a no-brainer so I reached out to Boys Ranch, make sure it wasn't a copyrighted name or anything. Um, cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, Water Tower Hill was was born. Nice, uh, excellent story, man. Uh, so anyway, uh, can, can, can you tell us more about the publishing process or, uh, or if you're taking submissions and all that? So in case anybody that's watching might be interested in publishing a book with you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're actually, we have blown up uh, this year. So it's been in the works for a couple of years to do this, but all I did was really perfect my own books under Water Tower Hill so that when I did open submissions, I could bring a level of professionalism and ability into uh, other, other people's dreams. And so we opened submissions um, last July or August. We got a huge um, response because of both Heather and I have kind of a name in the industry, uh, maybe nice. more so Heather than me. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, we signed we signed seven authors uh, for this this upcoming year. Including yeah, I saw own, this, in, in, including our own uh, books. Uh, we just uh, we have John Katie's new young adult uh, novel coming out in March. We have um, PB Lamb's two books coming out this year. Uh, Doctor Patrick Fontes out in um, Fresno, California. He wrote. Uh, a Latino vampire novel called Blood Set will be coming out in May. Yes, I, I'm interested in that one. Yeah, it's 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 fantastic. There's so much. <laughs> Patrick's just on a whole nother level. He really is. Uh, we just signed Wesley Smith to his newest book. He was with uh, Wicked House, but he's going to let us do one of his books. Um, I signed Heather Doherty. That's probably my biggest um, like catch, right? She, uh, she's allowing me to do. We did House of Haunts under Water Tower Hill. Um, and it blew up. Josh Mallerman wrote the foreword for that. Hospital of Haunts will be coming out this next year. We're hoping to get the same kind of response. So yeah, man, we it's this has been the dream, right? This has been the dream for a long time, and you got to take a million steps to get there. Oh, I know, believe me. And so now, now that uh, we have kind of our we have our own style, we have our own way of doing things. We we now have staff. Um, we have an in-house uh, off, or I mean, artist in Susan Rohde. Um, we have audio producers and Corey Beard and some others. Um, Heather and I do the majority of the logistic work. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this has been the dream. The family, big boys, big big time, baby. Yeah, it's been nice. It's been busy. It's been a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, Josh, well, I gotta tell you something, man. I've been following your uh, your journey, and I'm proud of you, man. I've been following your journey since the. The genesis of it all since the first time we interviewed you which yeah. was i think uh, maybe last year we interviewed you yeah it was about 18 months ago angel yeah you were yeah. my first podcast ever yeah yeah me and yeah uh i think we have doc fried here doc, doc free excuse me I, i'm sorry yeah it, it's just slips out. uh so doc uh you got any questions for joshua here um well, you've already told us where you got your inspiration, which is pretty fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. I I uh, I have to admire how you how you've turned that into such great set of books and what you've developed from it. I mean, that's amazing. Well, thank you. Um, but uh, we're just closing a window really fast. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, you, you do what you got to do. Speaking of windows, uh, so tell me, what do you guys think of Maine? 
Oh, <laughs> how impressive is this? So, <laughs> we, I mean, we, Heather's from Oklahoma. Obviously, I think everybody knows that. And uh, we, we met at a, one of my book signings there. Um, right around the time, Angel, the last time you interviewed me, sir. And, yes. Uh, I, it was always the plan that as soon as she could get away from some family obligations, we would come this direction because um, I spent a lot of time up here. My mom's family, the, the Fox families from up here. And um, I've always loved it, but I'm going to mm -hmm. let Heather answer that for you. How is New England? How is New England? It's unreal. It's I've, I've posted a couple times now that it's like everywhere you look is like you're in a storybook. Like I, I'm just like, look at the houses, look at the trees, look at the, the there's, there's nice. frozen water everywhere. I've never seen a frozen lake before. It's like, it's gorgeous. Oh, and right. it. Yeah. It's, it's so unlike there's, what I'm used to. There's definitely unique architecture here. Um, I was mm -hmm. born and raised here. I didn't always live here. I've lived everywhere else. Um, and then uh, my kids decided that they needed to live in Maine, decided that they had to have grandchildren. So here I slump along. <laughs> gonna go to Maine as much as I want to complain about it, but I was I was born and raised in Massachusetts, so I'm pretty used to this. Where in Massachusetts were you born? I was born in Salem, Massachusetts. My yeah, mom says that's why I'm such a witch. That's shitting. My my mom uh, grew up in Bill Ricca. My grandparents are are buried there in Fox Cemetery. So okay, I have, like, yeah, I grew, grew up in Lynn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Lynn, Lynn, yeah, the so, city of sin. You never come out the way you went, you know, that whole thing. I've heard that. Yeah. And my mom was a Bill Ricker girl. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Not far. Not far. Did you grow up around here too? No. So I actually spent the first year of my life here, but I didn't find that out till I was like 26. And so uh, I came up here, visited my grandparents a few times in my twenties. Um, and then work, work brought me up to Massachusetts in Tewksbury um, in 2020 and 2021. So I, I really, really just ingested the area um, and have always felt just a weird pooling. Even growing up in West Texas as a kid at that orphanage, I was studying Concord Mass. I, I knew all the stories of all the authors. Um, so when I was like 25, my aunt likes to tell the story. When I was 25, I was coming up to visit. And my aunt wanted asked me where I wanted to go. And I was like, well, I've got to go to Concord. And uh, we went to the old manse and took the tour. And the lady had all the information wrong that was given the tour. So I was the idiot <laughs> put forward on his back going, that's, that's not correct. He's not talking right now. So by the end of the tour, she was, asking, she was like looking yeah, at to see if it was right. Yes. But I'd studied it since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. It's about right. Uh, I see we, we got a question here from Dungeon Dan. Hey, Dungeon Dan, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I assume Dungeon Dan must be on call right now, so that's why he didn't join us. But he asks us, Heather, can you tell us about your books? He wants to know about your books, Heather. So go on ahead. Okay. Um, I personally have three books. My first is a it's kind of right in the middle between a novella and a short novel. Why are you looking at me? Because I have it here somewhere. It's oh, it's over there. I was gonna pull, I was gonna plug it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> knock. It is a goth. It's like a modern gothic ghost story um, about an old woman all alone in a house and the strange things that happen to her. And then, yeah, there goes the book. And then oh. my book, uh, is a short story collection called "Tales My Grandmother Told Me," which is sort of enhanced a little bit to make them a little bit longer, a little bit scarier, but she likes to tell scary stories. Um, I sort of got my love of horror from her, so I took the story she told us, changed them a little bit, made them into written stories. That's what Tell My Grandmother Told Me is. And then Josh and I together put out House of Haunts last October. Um, it's been a while since I talked about it. What is it, 23? go 23 rooms 23 ghosts 23 stories um the most haunted house in the world we call it uh we had 23 different horror authors write us stories uh they each got a room in this uh house hail house and each each author got to haunt their own room however they wanted um mm -hmm. put them all together yeah that anybody that was anybody in the horror world or is in that book claim cloud chapman mercedes yardley um Gage Greenwood, like some really big names that Heather, I, I mean, I've answered the call. You're so amazing. So. And it can be found <laughs> on Amazon. 
I know because I'm looking at it right now. Hey, uh, actually, I'm so going to go ahead and put a link. Sorry, Water Tower just signed contracts with uh, a lot of mass retailers. So we're actually, it's everywhere. It's in Targets and Walmarts. Um, bam. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, it was that that's been so it's been four and a half years of getting that stuff, the distributor channels and everything lined up. So yeah, DJ, you can find Why don't you tell us about that? Um, I am putting the link on the um on the page where we're live streaming. So if anybody wants to find that book on Amazon, they can find it. But why don't you tell us about that journey? I, so a lot of people know this story when I, um, I, I had written my, well, half of my second novel, but it already finished my first one. I got an agent out of DC, um, that farmed it out and, uh, got picked up by a publisher. Well, like an imprint of a big publisher. And they, they took me to New York, rolled out the carpet like they do, um, I'm not the I'm not the most novice person in the world as far as contracts and everything goes. And the contract they offered and the the verbiage in my first book they wanted to change. And by putting like uh trigger warnings on it and stuff, I just I I needed people to be triggered by my first book. So warning them away from it, I didn't feel was a good marketing plan. So I said no. And I said I can do it myself better. <laughs> Four and a half years later, I I am now. So um, but it took a lot of, uh, luckily I was single for about five and a half years and it took so much research and time and effort. Um, but also I've worked for the federal government for about 25 years. I've ran multi-million dollar uh, programs and missile defense systems and aircraft stuff. So it's it's not super hard. It just takes a long time to build their yeah. um, just filling out Just filling out the uh, supplier form for Target took four years to be able to fill in all the blanks. Had, wow. I mean, you literally had to, you had to set up everything. You had to sell enough books. You had to have an invoicing channel set up, an EAC channel, an EI. Your business had to be, all this crazy business stuff that you, it just takes time. It, you, you set up one thing. Yeah, I know. You set up another mm -hmm. thing, you see what happens. You sell some books. You have proof from a single platform like KDP or Ingram or something. And and then you can fill out this one single form for uh for Target that took four years to fill out. And I gotta wait six to eight weeks to get it back. But when I get it back, if they accept us, they'll buy three of all of our uh, our whole library for two thousand stores. So hmm. that's like an order of sixty thousand books right off the right off the bat. So damn. to get there, you, you need to spend four or five years learning. And dotting all the T's and crossing all the I's and doing everything correctly, right? That's on purpose. Uh, so it's it just, it, it's so weird to me how long it took mm -hmm. to be able to fill in ev and understand every single one of those blanks. You know, who's your distributor channel? Do you have digital invoicing set up? Do you have um, international supply chain set up? Who is that? And uh, it's just, it just takes time. And so that's what Water Tower Hill now offers all of our authors. Um, and we're rolling it out for uh, John Katie first with uh, Angela of Death. I think everybody's seeing all the posts. Got yeah. The doing, yeah. The, doing the formatting. And we've already got it in. He's got a uh, hometown book signing set up at Barnes & Noble already. Like, it's just that's the stuff that we offer through Water Tower Hill. But, man, I, I had to experiment with my own books to get to that point. You know, I used mm -hmm. my books as a test bed to see how far I could go, which caught Angel. It caught like Jennifer's attention last year because I had the Barnes and Noble signing as an indie author. Yeah. And then it mm -hmm. just steamrolls. We've been we've been on 50 different podcasts and NBC News for House of Haunts now. It's just it's part of the process. You've got to grind. And if you don't do the grind and you just want the prize at the end, you're never. Yeah, gonna... exactly. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, we got another question from Jack. Yeah, Jack is also watching us. Uh, Jack is asking Heather, what drove you to be an editor? <laughs> yep. Well, I, I like to joke and say that as a child and a teenager, I got in trouble a lot for correcting people. Um, oh. Wrong, word wrong. Um, I would really correct people's posts and be like, you, you spelled that wrong or, or you're, you know, whatever. So everybody which, likes you. Which people <laughs> like. And I had to learn uh, to not do that unless uh, asked to do it. But that's, um, 
that sort of attention to detail and knowledge of, of language and grammar and the way it works, it turns out you can use that um, and put it to put it to work for you and uh, tell people what they did wrong in their writing and they thank you for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I just I started doing it just as little sort of favors to people who I was friends with on their short stories and stuff. And then um, Christy Aldridge actually was the first person who asked me to edit a full novel. And I did that for her. And then it just sort of got around word of mouth when people needed an editor, they would, um, you know, other people would recommend me. And now I've now I've edited a lot. How many books did you edit last year? I edited 32 novels and three test prep guides last year. And she's edited for some very big names. Mm hmm All right. That sounds great. Well, now, I um, got a question. Uh, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? No, I was just going to say um, uh, the there are different types of edits. Um, there is line yes. edit. There is developmental edit. There is, you know, um, just the um, uh, uh, proofreading type of an edit. And I believe, Doc, don't you edit? You used to do Jeff's. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff and I edit yeah. for um, Scott Baker and I'm editing for a couple other people. Um, and it's you're right, it's not just correcting the grammar. It's like this right. stuff, or you know, you've got to redo this, maybe you should do that. As, mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind, um, Heather, um, when you do edits for like I edit um through my company, um and uh, we do different different levels of edit. We may do um, like a proofread type edit where I just kind of go through and catch all the little screw ups in the in the um, like a misspelling or re repetitive words. That's one of the biggest things that I always look for. And then um, there's there's a one price for that because it's a very simple edit. And then there's line edit, which takes care of the you know the absolute grammatical correctness and. And all that thing. And then developmental editing, of course, is one of the hardest ones to do because that's where, as Doc said, you need to uh, dive into this story because you have a giant hole over here. Or you have, you know, a, a, a something that isn't working. So when you do these edits, do you um, do you differentiate between the types of edits? Do you have different pricing? Um, I did see you had a Facebook post out about your editing. Do you have a website? I do not. Um, everything so far has, has literally just been sort of word of mouth recommendations. Um, but I, I do what I call full service editing. I do everything. I will check your spelling, your grammar, and give you developmental notes. Um, one of my favorite thing is to catch uh, historical inaccuracies in people's writings. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Let me Google. And then I call them out. Um, I shouldn't say call them out. I point it out to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We call it out. I mean, tell it like it. Yeah, we do. We all do. Yeah. Well, in editing, you know, you have to you have to be sort of firm, but but kind at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. And I always I always make sure to throw in, you know, positive comments uh, as I go through, along with the the criticisms and the things that need to be changed or fixed. But yeah, I do it all. Um, when I first started editing for Wicked House Publishing. Patrick, who's the owner there, he said, don't worry about yeah, the proofreading part. We have somebody else to do that. And I said, I can't do that. I can't go through it and not fix everything. My brain doesn't work that way. So you're, you're, you're going to get it all. That's just kind of the way, that's the way I do it. I'm, I, I hate to say OCD because that's an actual diagnosis and people throw it around, but I'm very detail oriented. Detail, yes. I have, I have to fix everything. You know, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. tell you because she's, she's so horrible at building herself up um she edits all of water tower hill publishing's books and my own books included she made them perfect and it's gotten to the point that i trust her as an editor so much i i don't even look at what she's changed i just tell her do do the change if i need plot hole adjustments or i need developmental things like just point that out and i'll fix that um but this woman is so good they say if you're good at something, never do it for free. Um, and she's just fantastic. So awesome. Um, well, you so can't beat that, Heather. You can't beat that. You know, if if uh, if uh, nobody on earth likes you, your husband should at least like you. 
There you go. <laughs> I don't know that anybody else on earth does like me, but that's well, okay. I mean, we had to talk oh, about hey, I think we all speech in my post all the time, but. We did. When we first started talking, we're like dating online. I pointed out that he, he spelled absolutely the wrong way every time and he got really irritated. But so he now, spelled, hey, Josh, I, I have right words now. like that. Have you ever have spelled something words. wrong on your phone so much it actually will change it to the wrong spelling? Yes. Uh, so for, for me, it's like the word absolutely. The, the E goes after the L instead of before it absolute mm -hmm. yeah yes. and so my phone <laughs> literally like misspells it now so and and and, and misspelling on my text to her is a passion project for me um just to see the vein in her forehead start throbbing it's it's <clears> awesome. throat> uh, throat> <laughs> uh so anyway joshua I, I got a question for you my my brother uh what what what, what do you prefer do you prefer doing ebooks wide or do you prefer Kindle a minimum? You know, the, the cool thing about ebooks, so I do all ebooks for Water Tower Hill on KDP because of Unlimited. And I think seeing the daily, even if it's a couple of cents and the bar chart is just a little bit every single day. Um, I read this quote one time that said, greatness is small advancements over a long period of time. And what I really love to do is watch that bar chart get a little bit blue every single day, even at six cents, 12 cents, a dollar fifty. And so I tell my I tell my authors now, I'm like, if you want ebooks in any other platform, I that's okay. But if you put it in Kindle Unlimited, which millions of people have, they can get it for free. But you get even even cents a day helps you sometimes in your mental space keep yes. I mean, yep. I, when uh, can you imagine like somebody out there is reading your book and you get a visual um, number on, on yeah, your my, website every yeah, day? Like oh, they, they, somebody read 56 pages of one of my books. Can you imagine if you're feeling down about your writing or you're thinking nobody wants to read it and stuff? And like you go on there and you see that every day somebody or some people have read it. That to me, that's like, oh, that's worth the intrinsic value of staying on Unlimited. Um, because I'm all about people first. And if people get bogged down, if people are are hurting or they're thinking they're not making an impact, just going on there and seeing some people are reading your pages every day, that to me, that's enough, right? That's enough to just keep just moving that. forward. So that's oh yeah. So yeah, the business business side away, right? Because you could probably you know sell ebooks uh, and a wide distribution and make a lot more money. But KDP's uh uh Putting it on there every day, how many pages were read, the intrinsic value of that, Angel, you can't put a dollar amount on it. I, I, not Joshua, I know, man. I've been, I've been at this for like close to seven years already. I know. <laughs> I, like right now, people are reading my book, so I know. It's about, and yes, but you're, you're, you're so correct about that, man. You really are. Uh, Joshua, we actually got another question from Jack. It says, he asks, do you have a similar story to Heather about being an editor? yourself oh, uh no i'm not an editor at all i i have hired so many editors and worked with so many um i can't stand editing i don't even edit my own books i just write it and throw it at my wife <laughs> I, I, I do soft editing. i'll be honest i'll write a chapter so i have a whole writing process it happens at like four to five a.m every day um well not every day but i try to make it every day um but I hate editing so much because I'm not OCD, but I'm a I'm a self perfectionist, and it bothers me when I when I when I miss stuff, when I don't do it right the first time. And so, thank God Heather's here to like give me grace and go, no, you're fantastic. And she also talked a lot about um, or a little bit about building up writers in a nice way, giving them affirmation. So my love language is words of affirmation. Like I need to be told every day that, hey, you're you're awesome, keep going, you know. Um, people think that that stokes an ego, but people whose love language is words of affirmation, it'll never blow your head up, it, it never will. You just, you need that every day. So to Jack, a long answer to Jack's question is, I don't edit anything, <laughs> I can't stand it. Um, now I format books, um, I'm fantastic at layout, um, I, I did that when I worked in uh, military uh, uh, documents and stuff. I'm really good at laying out things. So like uh, covers, I'm really good. At, I'm not good at doing the art, but I'm good at saying, hey, we need this box here or that color there. Give me a gray scale. Give me a green. 
uh, whatever, you know, we, I can do that. And then the formatting the books, everybody said that House of Haunts was fantastic, but it was a beautiful book. When you hold it in your hand, it's a beautiful book. And so that's where my pride comes from is making something physically awesome. Um, but no, I'm not an editor. I hate editing. I refuse to edit. Uh, I even my own stuff. <laughs> like this. I, I, I married Heather only for that reason. Oh, <laughs> ouch. You're in trouble, buddy. That's uh -oh. all I got to you know say. You yeah, you should have never said that. If their screen <laughs> goes proof. blank, Ooh. if their screen goes blank, we know what happened. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to catch an axe in the back of the head. Yeah. Yep, uh, something like that. Uh, anyway, Jack, he, he he was also asking that question to uh, Doc Freed. Uh, he was, Jack was asking, Does do you have the same... Uh, experience about being an editor, or did you have a did you have a similar story to have being an editor, Doc? He was asking you as well. I'm used to the just the people, in, including Jack, who's not around today, just handing me the books, and I'll start into them, and it's like, oh, I'm sorry, it doesn't work. You, you've switched universes. You now have brought in stuff from somebody else's books that. This is supposed to be connected to some other movie or something like that. Okay. I just don't want to say, this is what it should be, or this, and give them their choice so that they can come up. I mean, I'm not the writer, but I want to point them in a bunch of directions that they might be able to go. Some some more words, you know, and if you guys can pick up a thousand words from it, that's cool. No, no uh, reason. Complain that the book was four pages too long. No, no, something that'll make him write four more pages or six more pages or eight more pages or another chapter. That makes me happy. Oh, I need yeah. you to read my stuff. That's well, it. You're send hired. It. Send it. <laughs> I know uh, Jeff spoke very highly of you often. And uh, so uh, you had his vote, which yep. gives you mine. <laughs> so Joshua and Heather, I am curious. Um you're now up here. Uh they're they're probably 20 minutes from me. Uh I'm in Biddeford. Okay. So I'm about five blocks from the raging Saco River right now. The doggone thing is in beast mode. Um but um so now you are, are you guys all settled in up here or um, do you, you know, plan to so, you're in Portland? Yeah, we're in, we're in Portland. We're staying at just a, an extended stay suites at the moment. Um, we we did that in Tulsa as well because when we got so we got married in July, and she had a grandbaby coming in December, and so we stayed in Tulsa for her to be there for the grandbaby being born. Judah was born. Um, she helped Rebecca for a few weeks after that, and the plan was to buy up here. And so mm -hmm. um, we have been house hunting, except for the snow days since we've been here, um, as soon as we find. Now, we don't want to be in Maine. No offense. Um, I want to be, be in, in northern, I want to be in northern New Hampshire or not yeah. northern um, like the seacoast. And oh, so down by uh, Port, Port, uh, Portsmouth. Yep. So Portsmouth, Dover, Durham, Madbury. Yep. We're yep. looking at that area. Um, I used so, yeah, to live a, over in Epsom. So, yep. So we have a. We have a, a a very awesome realtor uh, who's a big name on YouTube, and I, I'm not allowed to say his name yet. But uh, we, uh, yeah, we're looking for a house. We're looking for a house as soon as we find one we love. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and buy and buckle down in Water Tower Hill. I I haven't hung my uh, metal Water Tower Hill sign anywhere yet. That's gonna come. Um, and yeah, that was always the plan. So we're still in this like honeymoon, working from a from a sweet uh, thing that we've been doing for about seven months, and it's uh, it's it's been fantastic. I get it. I mean, personally, um, I I moved up from uh, the west side of New Hampshire. I was down by Keene, um, and I about almost uh, a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and um, I didn't I didn't ever really want to live in Maine. But um, this is just what happened and how it happened. But uh, mm -hmm. my thing is, is I really want to get. And anybody ever follow the van life stuff? Mm -hmm. oh, to be, yeah. I want to get. I want to get me a van and and put everything in it and uh, go <laughs> on the road and explore. 
be one of those writers like uh, like a nomad or something and just kind of wander about <laughs> Yeah, we Heather and I talk a lot about that. Even though she uh, was born and raised and lived in Oklahoma her whole life, we just have kind of a weird nomadic, just see the beauty of this world and feel the magic of different places. And um, it, it, I worried the entire drive up here, right? My wife has never lived outside of Oklahoma. And I worried the whole time up here, like, and I kept asking, are you homesick? Are you wishing to go back? Like, are you, and she was like, I haven't thought about Oklahoma in two weeks. Like, I just want to see new things. So I took her through DC, New York City. Uh, we went to Concord, Mass and Authors Ridge. Uh, we were getting snowed on up there. Um, and then here in uh, in Maine, we've, we've hit the headlight. We've hit Nubble. We've hit York. Um, just everywhere I can take her to just fully make sure I don't have to take her back to Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a great story. There's some good stuff. I mean, um, I I was born and raised here, so um, I I've been everywhere except Hawaii. So I've even lived in Alaska. I've made the rounds once or you're twice, that, I guess. You're that Johnny Cash song, right? I, I'm yeah. I am just I'm everywhere. But um, there mm -hmm. is something, Heather. Wait till you see the fall in New England. Oh, there know. is no fall anywhere in this country and i have been from coast to coast and there is no fall like new england so, so uh, you will you will find it quite a thing patricia patricia baker uh is pb pb lamb she's one of the authors with water tower hill we're doing two books for her this year and she said and you did give heather room and board so we have a joke <laughs> we have Very a joke good. uh that um about the editing that i was going to have to pay her and i didn't know how much she she uh was going to cost me and she said just put a ring on it and room and board <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to know how much heather charges for editing uh wait a minute that's a very that's a very exclusive rate uh not everybody gets that <laughs> yeah, most people it's cash money but for somebody like me i have to put a ring on i had to put a ring on it and room and board and uh patricia just uh pointed that out thanks thanks pb hope you're doing okay <laughs> And Jack just said that room has a Hollywood high rise hotel feel. Well, it's the price of one, but we're in Portland, Maine. <laughs> so, um, it, I mean, I like the extended stay. It's got a kitchen behind us. You can't see. Um, we, I mean, we we lived in the one in Oklahoma. I I, I feel yes. like a vagrant, vagrant, mm -hmm. a vagrant that's homeless right now. But and, and these things are pricey. But we we have our whole computer set up here. We have a kitchen and a bath. If I could afford the price of this, it's not a bad deal. I haven't had to mow a lawn. Um, I don't pay utilities. <laughs> so, it's so, kind of like an apartment, isn't it? They are. Um, the one yeah. we're at in Tulsa, they actually, people live here permanently. Um, but, but this is not our, this was a, this was a resting place. We, we'll get to our home soon. All right, cool. Uh, so Joshua, I there was a post that caught my attention when you were talking about that that, that all the books in your series are different genres. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what did what 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 what, was, what made you do that? What made you go my uh, my book one is uh, this particular genre and the other one is another genre? What made you do that? God, uh, I I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, the fact that I don't want to sell any books. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, Angel, um, I have never, ever, ever wanted to be pigeonholed into any one thing. It's, uh, it would drive me absolutely crazy to become known for being a legal thriller writer or a mystery writer or no offense, a horror writer. Um, I believe that I have an ability to write anything. And so when I thought Wait, about this series, I, I actually you. did write the first two books as standalone books. And they both had archangels in it just because I kind of like that theme. You can use it as a as a, a plot device to like you need something to happen. You're like uh, archangel pops up and makes it happen. You know, it's it's a fun theme. But also people who write vampires, werewolves, uh, hobbits and wizards. You know, this is just my trope for right now. Uh, but the funny thing is I'm publishing four books this year with angels in it. I'm kind of becoming this like angel guy. But um. The reason I did that, Angel, is like I, when I put it together as a series, 
I'm like, it'd be pretty cool if like in the Marvel multiverse, there's like eight different Earths, right? Um, in this creation. And you find out as the story progresses, um, one is in the Old West, one is in the future in, in an apocalyptic event. Um, most of them take place in like today's world. Uh, but it's for me, the brilliance behind being able to mix all of that under a single umbrella story. Um, I don't think it's truly caught on. I don't think people have truly caught on. Pat, they can't get past the multi genre idea because people get very familiar in the genre they love. And yeah. mm -hmm. so that's why I make the joke that I do it because I don't want to sell any books. There's not a huge audience out there for a multi genre series. I would really, really love to blaze that trail. Um, I, and, and going back to that post, I don't know any other writers who are doing it. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get corrected by a lot of people, but I don't know any true blue million word series that break the genre boundaries, the time boundaries, the character boundaries that I'm doing here. Um, and if I do it successfully, Angel, and you blaze a trail, it probably wouldn't be like fully accepted till after I've moved on to something else or that I'm gone from this world. But I think when people yeah, read it, they're going to yeah. finally go, holy crap, this is brilliant. Why has nobody done this before? Um, and I'm sure there's people out there who've done it. I just have never seen it. I've never read it. And I was like, if, you remember last time you interviewed me and you well, asked me about the first book, why I got the idea. And I said, it's because I read a quote a long time ago that said, if there's a book you want to read and it hasn't been written, you need to write it. And that's what I'm doing here with the series. I'm just, I'm writing something I would love to read. There you go. And because uh, DJ, uh, you might, you, you might know Jeff Thompson. Jeff always said, you're in the entertainment business. Your job is to entertain the reader. Yep. So yep. If, if you're entertained, Joshua, then there's a good chance the reader will be entertained. At least, at least that's, that's half the equation, you could say. Well, when I, when I was writing them by myself, Stephen King talks about it on writing. You have like the ultimate reader. You're one person you write to. Well, you're first super fan. Reading four or five of these books, I didn't have anybody to write to. Um, we've actually had long, long discussions that my writing in the last book and the next book has actually changed because now I would love my wife to be that penultimate reader. And I'm trying to, I'm trying every day to earn my wife's respect. That's how much I respect her and her knowledge and her place in the industry and her ability to edit and everything. Like I'm sitting over here sweating bullets going, is she going to like this? Is she going to laugh at this part? And Stephen King tells a story where he was driving to Charlotte, North Carolina with Tabitha and she's reading the, the newest manuscript. And he keeps looking over at her and she looks at him and she goes, stop being so goddamn needy. And it's true, though. You really want the person you write for to enjoy your stuff and it makes your writing better. And so it, you're exactly right. When I first started, I had nobody but myself to impress. And the writing gets actually better when you try to impress somebody you fully respect. Yeah, that's true. He, see, and, that, and that's why I'm like about the... The, this is uh, a synergy between you and Heather. I, I I like that. I love that about you guys. You know, it, you can I can tell there's a true husband and wife team, and it, and I saw I said I tell myself that's the, I'd like to have that one day myself. Now whether that happens or not, it's a different story. But but gotta, but anyway, you got to hold out. Anyway, I held out for five and a half years. So. Yeah, that's true. But anyway, uh, Jack asked a question. Uh, uh, going back, it says, have you two planned out a collaboration together to do a story together? So we, we are doing, we did the House of Haunts, but that was completely her idea. Um, it's going to be a series. So Hospital of Haunts will come out this year with 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 a lot of the same writers. Um, we have another anthology, a dark urban okay. fantasy anthology uh, called Street Magic that will hopefully will come out by December. But as far as writing a story together... That's very tough. We write separate. We write different genres. Yes. Um, we have discussed it. No, we've discussed we it. Have. I'm just trying to figure out. We have the basics of a of a. I mean, it's actually Josh's idea, story idea that he has that he. Are you talking about only we believe that he um, has asked me to kind of collaborate on? Yeah, we and haven't done it yet. Yeah, we discussed it. Yes. We have a. We have a. I have an idea for a story of an uh, a coming of age story with children, just like it, Stephen King's it. 
um, uh -huh. modern times with cell phones and Uber and and Cash App and everything like that. Um, and I've got a I got a, a an antagonist and and one kid goes missing. It's kind of a whole thing, right? And I don't know. And she always talks about she wishes somebody would write it with uh, five girls. Um, I just think that that's just uh, uh, nobody would undertake that. But uh, <laughs> with five boys, you can you can get <laughs> you can mess with their personalities a bit. Um, but yeah, we uh -oh. I completely forgot about that that we were going to do that together. I remember. That's a good question, Jack. Thank you for asking that. One of the things that we have come to love, even though I still have the day job here on this other computer, um, we live books our whole day. We open a window, have some music playing. She's editing on her desk over there. Um, and I'm doing book stuff here. And then I send stuff across. She sends it back. Um, it really does feel like I'm not, I, I don't only have a wife. I have a business partner. Um, I have somebody who holds up the other end of the couch, so to say, um, where we're trying to move this whole thing along. And the fact that we both dreamed before we ever even met of having a, a home life that's completely surrounded uh, with books, not just, not just on the shelves, but what we do every day, um, what our biggest passions are, what we can talk about the most. It has truly made this relationship a level that I I didn't even I didn't even fathom it was going to be like this. So collaborations will come, books will come, companies will come. Like we're we're just so passionate about books. It goes back to our whole childhood. Like the, we were the exact same kind of kid. Our birthdays are only a couple of days apart, and we were the same kind of. Kid. We 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 always had books with us. Um, I didn't correct people's language. I would have got beat up. Um, but I escaped into books because my my childhood wasn't great. I escaped into books. She did the same thing. So much, Louis. So it just it, my God, it makes sense, right? It just totally makes sense now. And I think people are starting to see that the Josh and Heather show is like legit. It, it is, and trust me, it is. I I. I sometimes I log into Facebook too, and I see your poses, Mike. It, it gets me up in the mornings, Mike. Man, jo if Joshua could do it, so can I. Let's let's go. No yeah. excuses. No, no, yeah. If one hundred percent, if I can do it, you can do it, man. I, I, no I've done, I, I've done this from almost nothing. So just, a, mm, yeah, just man. a, just an unwillingness to take no for an answer. That's right, man. Uh, yeah, and I can relate. I got. Yep, I. I, I walk a similar path and we and we got that new england grit right like oh yeah yeah get it, it done yeah you get oh, it yeah. done yeah, yeah even, yeah, we, even work we work wicked hard we work wicked hard at i tried to explain to her the wicked thing i'm gonna let my family from up here explain it to her yeah wicked's yeah. the thing but wicked isn't bad wicked is good well yeah so yeah, it's like wicked good or wicked badass or 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 wicked sweet or it's I have, it's a I have a lot of cousins um in the Fox family up here and two of them my favorite uh cousins Laura and Michelle they're just a few years younger than me and the last time we visited I was I was asking when I can use the word wicked in a sentence and I would bring something up like oh my it's it it snowed wicked hard and they're like nope that's not it. Or uh, the the weather's wicked bad, and they're like, nope, that's not it. <laughs> so I, I need a crash course in when I can say that exact word. Well, I just think that it, it has like a it's 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 like saying very, it's very bad or very, but uh, very very bad. Now there's very bad, and then there is very very bad or very 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 bad or wicked bad. You know, mm -hmm. so it it's all it's all a matter of. You know, just I think you can use it whenever, it. though. You know, depending on how dramatic you want to be. Yep. So, Joshua, yeah, you gotta learn how to talk, Heather. We we mm -hmm. park the car. We don't park anything. We park the car. I don't know. We, we ride the horse. Yeah, no, it's the town name <laughs> punctuations mm -hmm. that really get us. Um, because she loves to correct people's language. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's a it's a charity oh. work for her now. Um, when somebody says Peabody, she'll be like, ah, that's not how you say that. And they're like a million. Uh, yes, it is. Be like, yes, it is. Did y'all drive through Worcester? W Worcester? I can't even say it right. Worcester? Everybody tells me I say it wrong. No, I Worcester. Get it. It's spelled Wor Worcester. 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 <laughs> that's how it's spelled. We call it Worcester. 
of Worcester. Worcester. Worcester, Massachusetts. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah, when Joshua. I was a little kid, I couldn't say Massachusetts. I called it Massachusetts. Uh, so Joshua. Uh, Jack. Jack says, I'm going to need some Venmo or PayPal information DM to me. I need a book from each of you to the wall. So, yeah, he's going to want to assign book from they have you, to be Dark signed. From you. Yeah, we, um, I mean, I uh, I have uh, hardbacks of the Archangel Mission series <laughs> available. Um, she has all kinds of books available. Um, at the end of this year, after we publish the entire publishing schedule, Water Tower Hill will have 21 books available, um, 10, of, 10 of which are ours. So... Well, well, you gotta start for somewhere. Of them. Right. Gotta start for somewhere. That's Wonderful. Yeah, uh, Jack, I, I, um, just to answer Jack, uh, Cash mm -hmm. App is Joshua Lloyd Fox. Uh, PayPal is your HD thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I what Cash App is easier. Cash App is easier. Yeah, just Joshua Lloyd Fox with the little cash tag. Um, or you can buy it through my website, www.joshualloydfox.com. And just yesterday, we got watertowerhill.com with a splash page. So, yes, I saw that. That'd be good. Loved it. Marie Lance I was ask for that. it for me. Yeah, that's part of the packaging we had to do with the mass retail uh, companies is having all the different sites and venues. And I've, I've had the link tree. My, my oldest son set that up for me a couple of years ago. We're on all the social medias. But from a business sense, they need to know your channels and how many people you have. Um, mm -hmm. you, you guys hear all the time in the book industry about the platform. You have to build a platform. Mm -hmm. And a platform. I don't really know what yeah. that was. And it's literally this. Angel's been watching me from day one, right? That's platform. Yes. Um, every site that I'm on, every website, if you Google my name, uh, it comes up just like, say, Stephen King's came, comes up. Now, he's got a lot more. And I keep bringing him up. I should bring up other writers. But um, but you you build that public persona, um, and that's the platform they look for. And again, it just takes time. Google looks at how many hits you have on all your sites, and then it'll make you that public kind of figure. Um, it it takes work. It takes time. It takes saying good things and putting out good product. Um, Angel knows that. His uh, his books, I mean, he gets pre-sales more than I've sold some of my books altogether. So it's, uh, it's it takes time and effort. And it takes just time, man. Uh, so Joshua, I, I'm sorry to be cutting you off like that, but at, but but I want uh, but I want to ask you one more thing. So what what are the exact submission guidelines for your your pub, your publishing company for in case there's anybody that might be interested in uh sending you a submission? What yeah, are the guidelines? Good, good question. Um, so we actually have two different companies, uh, Water Tower okay. Hill. We've talked about this entire time, and then the, we have a horror imprint uh, that belongs to Heather that's called Parlor Ghost Press. And her submission guidelines are a little uh, less stringent than mine. Um, but just a simple email to Water Tower Hill Publishing LLC at gmc or gmail.com or through the website. Um, just give me your first three chapters in the email uh, body heading with the your author name, the title. Um, and then there's we have all the information on all of our social media on the exact uh, rules of uh, mm -hmm. submission and the guidelines. And we do that only to weed out the ones who don't take the time uh, to be serious about this. There's uh, probably more than half that just, they have a preprint email they send regardless of what your guidelines are. And it's, yes. really, it's a really good weeding out process. If, if we just like, I don't care what the book is, if they can't follow simple instructions, like they're, we're not going to mesh as an author publisher. They, that's thing. called shotgunning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't have the uh, computer program that does that automatically for you yet, uh, but, you know, it's in the works. But, yeah, it's Good. a great question. Go to uh, Water Tower Hill Publishing on Facebook. Go to watertowerhill.com, joshualloydfox.com, parlorghostpress.com will be coming. Um, and then the Parlor Ghost Press Facebook page and Instagram page has the info on Please. it as well. And if you can't find it, you don't want to work with us. <laughs> basically, yeah. I mean, I've seen your website already, so I know all the details. And one, and one more thing for the audience: uh, Do you take uh, work that's already been published, or does it have to be a, a first publishing rights? Because I know some publishers are willing to take uh, work that's already self-published. 
Yeah, I, I actually created a way to verify that the author maintains all rights across the board before I'll work with it. Um, but I can't say no, no other pre-published books because that's just crazy talk. Um, there's a lot of really, really good books out there that went through like Vanity Press or yeah. um, didn't get a full uh, like workup like we could do for them. Um, I mean, your books Literally, were the very first ones that I was just, like main. I, I needed to learn how she got her rights back or rights back on the book. So no, we'll publish anything as long as I go through the process of verifying the, the, the rights. Um, and, and, and I feel like one of the things that we've done very successfully is make previously published books even better. Uh, it goes through Heather, it comes through me, it gets the Water Tower Hill kind of look and feel, and I, uh, people are really starting to appreciate that. Excellent, excellent. So um, anybody else got questions? Um, just um, to uh, go, uh, go over again, uh, let's see if I can speak at this point in time, just to go over again, where can people find you? Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, just Google Joshua Lloyd Fox. Uh, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, we, I, I work the most on Facebook. So I have Joshua Lloyd Fox on Facebook, Water Tower Hill Publishing yes. on Facebook. Um, Heather Doherty mm -hmm. or, uh, Heather Doherty Horror yeah, is yeah, on Instagram, awesome. Facebook. What's that X thing? The X thing. Well, um, Twitter used to be Twitter. Yeah. I'm, I'm growing on TikTok. That's kind of the, the platform that I've really been pushing, uh, lately. Um, but uh, joshualloydfox.com, watertowerhill.com, just watertowerhill.com, um, or linktree slash JL Fox. That's, that's, I mean, if you can't find us, <laughs> we, you're not looking. You're not looking hard enough. Yeah, exactly. We, I, I mean, it, just Google my name. There, There's 150 different places you can find me. Joshua Noy Fox. That'd be good. Yeah, Lloyd be was good. one L. That's it's real. Joshua Lloyd is my real name. Joshua Lloyd Doherty is my real name. Fox was my mom's name. And I asked my grandfather if I can use it to write books. And he said, yes, but only if they're good. Okay. Well. <laughs> so what was your link tree one more time? That I feel like is probably the best thing. What was the yeah, link tree uh, address so one more time? The way you do it, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E backslash J-L Fox. And you, Heather? Uh, I'm on all the socials, just under my name, Heather Doherty, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm not hard to find either. And then, of course, all the company websites gets to both of us. So, And Doc, uh, in, in spite of the fact that I intend to hog up a little bit of your time here moving forward, you're going to be getting a message from me. Um, if uh, authors want to find you, um do you have openings is there a way they can reach out to you i have openings you can reach me on facebook under doc breed or as angel loves to call me doc bride because that's the way it's spelled <laughs> um and that's that's cool or at doc mm -hmm. at abo arts a b o a r t s dot doc a b o a r t s dot com dot com yeah wonderful well, guys, um, I wish you guys much luck in Maine. We are totally going to have to grab a coffee sometime. Oh, I'm yeah. not that far. Um, like having I don't have a license right now because um, I, I have a CDL, and my CDL is from New Hampshire. Hmm. And I didn't realize that I had to send some paperwork into the state along with a big fat $145 before they'd give me a little piece of paper that I could take down to the registry and uh, pay the big fee for a CDL on top of it all. Um, so I have to get down there and do that. But, uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna have to hang out and have some coffee. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think um, we're visiting a speakeasy tonight that we're really excited about. What was the name of it? Lincoln's. Lincoln's. We're going to be there. Lincoln's. Yeah. Ah. Nice. Very nice. Well, y'all have a good time with that. Yeah. She has uh, her her best friend from uh, childhood lives uh, about an hour north of here, or hour and a half north. They're they're he and his husband's coming down tonight, and we're just gonna have a nice little powwow. So, oh, sounds like a good time. Yeah. While well, you it's, guys it's, enjoy one it, of the, one of the things of coming up here is having people here. So that's what we're excited about.
And Angel? Yes. Uh, let's uh, let's have it. Give us all the digits, the deets. Yep. Where can people sure. find you? So, yeah, right now I'm working on editing Pina Canasa Rats 4. It's already up to 49 pre-orders. One more, so I hit my first stretch score of 50. So this is the first series where I would ask Tony Kidd on pre-orders, the Pina Canasa Rats series. You can find me on Amazon at Angel Ramon for my horror books or Antonis Maximus for my historical fiction books. You can find me uh, every weekend on this podcast, the book, the uh, I've got a brain fall right now, excuse me. The uh, Book of Simon podcast, you can find me here on every Saturday. You can find me on The Witten Undead and The Witten Horrors. Anywhere in the Wood Pyramids uh, family, you can find me. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put the link to my uh, off the page as well, so on the comments. So if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. Wonderful. Well, I got to stand in for Jack. Um I'm I'm not always on. Every now and again, I creep the show though. Um, Y'all you know, find me creeping in, and I slide in, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, "Oh shit! Shh, everybody, be quiet! Dee's here! Oh crap!" Uh, but no, <laughs> I uh, I uh, I run the Word Peddler Society. Uh, I own it. It is a subsidiary of Angry Eagle Publishing. Um, it's our social network, and we have um, the Word Peddler magazine that highlights books so you guys need to make sure to get your books all sent over to the word peddler which is really easy to find wordpeddlersociety.com um and there's a link on there where the magazines are and you can submit content which would be great if we got in, uh, interviews from anybody who wants to do an interview um we publish them and uh, if you do an interview or submit a story you get a whole page ad so heck it's free why not yeah um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I write books, of course. I'm not hard to find. DJ Cooper's pretty easy um, on Amazon. And uh, that's 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 about it. And uh, it's been a genuine pleasure to chat with you guys. And I was going to come on anyway. Who knows? Maybe it wasn't you guys. Maybe it was me, you know, because I was coming on. Everybody's cowering in the corner somewhere. Yeah, and, that could, uh, that could be. Mm -hmm. I think we just talked about that in the written on Dead Earth. I, I, I called them all chatty. They were all like, well, what about this? What about that? And I'm like, y'all are a chatty bunch. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. <laughs> like cowering in the corner, hoping I don't notice them or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, find any of the word peddler groups on Facebook, and you'll be able to chat up some authors in there. We have lots and lots of authors and lots and lots of genres um, that we, you know, hope to um, help promote. Uh, we work hard to promote the indie author. And that's part of where... Jack's whole podcast thing happened. He started out and written Undead. And I said, Oh no, dude, you gotta take this all the way. We need all the genres in this thing. You gotta you gotta talk to everybody. He does such a great job. We sure do wish um Jack a speedy recovery. And uh, yes. he's really struggling. I talked to him this morning and um he's really having an issue with his knee from the accident. And uh so you know, everybody, if you pray, mm -hmm. put your Put your prayers up there for Jack and for his knee. Um, he got smacked pretty hard. I don't know if y'all saw his his truck, but it's pretty much totaled. And uh, it's amazing, you know, that, you know, he's still walking. So yeah. we're all, we're all hoping guy. good things for Jack. Love you, Jack. He's never, I don't think he's ever missed a podcast. So, you know, he ain't feeling too good if, if he's missed. So everybody shoot him a message. Tell him get off his ass and get on the podcast. We don't care. I mean, if he could blow his face up and show up on the podcast, come on. He uh <laughs> well, Jack, Jack, you'll just have to have me back for a third time or us back. There you go. There you oh, go. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Let's get him back. Jack, it's good to see you. And uh, I guess this is it. My grandson is really on my back right now. No, actually, <laughs> to lay on the back of the couch. I'm a little, a little concerned about this. Um, so I'm babysitting and, uh, so I, I really have to get going. Uh, right. any final words from anybody? Got no, anything? Pleasure from this side. Um, we, we watch you guys as well. So. Now what he meant to say is go to my websites and buy my books. There you go. Yeah. Just, just making I'm sure everybody can read between the lines on the speaks. <laughs> yeah, there. you gotta say it, man. You gotta mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Angel yeah, but, means the same thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But but seriously, Josh, but it was a it was a pleasure to interview you again, and it was a pleasure to interview uh, Heather. 
know. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Doc, it was great to see you. And yeah, you. Doc as well. I don't Doc, think I've really had that much Doc conversation Queen. with you before. I got we just talked about time. you, Jeff and I. <laughs> Bye. Oh. All right. Bye. Guys, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Well, they probably will. I don't know. Yeah. Unless Jack makes me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Take it easy. Bye.